Uh, my name is Tom Parker, I'm from Soil Precision, Precision Farming. Precision farming is fundamentally starting to look at the, the management of farm inputs on a more of a spatial basis. Um, traditionally, a, uh, a farmer or land manager would have looked at each field um, and taken a single soil sample and that would have given an average reading for that particular field. And that was then is how we used to guide the nutritional inputs, which is fertiliser. Um, that's how we would use that fertiliser to feed our crops. What we do now is we look at every hectare and allow it to have its place within the management of the field and allow it to say what it requires. So every hectare has a soil sample analysis taken from it. From that information, we can then uh, produce a, 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 a simple uh, contour map of how the nutrient levels for phosphate, potassium, magnesium and pH, which is used in lime management, uh, vary across the field. And that allows us to tailor our inputs to each particular hectare within that field. My name is Ian Piggott and I am a leaf demonstration farmer. We've been using precision farming for about five years now. We started off when we were making a decision to buy a new sprayer and uh, looked long and hard at the choices available and decided that actually a, a machine that was operated by GPS technology was um, going to be beneficial for our business. It, it sort of ticked the boxes in terms of environmental performance and financially I thought it made sense. The um, precision farming on the sprayer is all, of, all about boom technology. It uses the satellite to tell it when to turn on and when to turn off, which we're trying to make this machine work quite hard with one operator and it means that he, he can stay alert for much longer periods because he's not having to turn sections off up and down the field. It means that it's uh, much more accurate so we can cut down on any overlaps, you know, which is good for the environment, and also cut down on our expenditure. So once we'd spent um, a year working with the GPS on the, on the sprayer, we then uh, bought a steering system to put on the combine and on the cultivation equipment, which I find from personally, I, I drive the combine, and it's, uh, I would never have thought that it would have um, made the work that much easier. It means that you can concentrate on operating the, the combine to its optimum performance and not having to, to focus on, in my case, driving in very wiggly lines. Um, and then most recently, so after the sprayer, uh, the cultivation equipment and the, um, and the combine, we've now gone to variable rate P and K and variable rate, rate nitrogen. We've always mapped the whole farm, but we haven't necessarily translated that information onto the ground um, accurately. So we now will be applying, um, this spring we'll be applying uh, P and K through variable rate and, uh, and then we'll be using satellite imaging to, to adapt our nitrogen applications as well. So um, this year we'll be uh, applying our nitrogen with variable rate application. Reasons being is that I think it's cost effective. Um, I also believe that this year the crops are going to be incredibly varied. So so with the, with the use of using satellite imaging they will pass over the over the farm and we'll get four maps at uh, this time of year in March and then another four in four weeks time and so on throughout the season and they will they will judge the leaf area index of the fields and then we can adapt our nitrogen applications accordingly to uh, looking for an optimum leaf area index uh, for wheat and adjusting it accordingly so areas where the crops are thinner we might put a little bit more nitrogen on and where they're particularly lush less nitrogen. So the next foray into um, precision farming will be a natural progression into variable rate um, drilling. So we will adjust our seed rates according to soil type so um, the lighter land may, may get a, a lower seed rate um, than some of the heavier land and we'll be doing that based on the soil maps that we've already had so that, that's something that we'll do this autumn. In, in terms of the financial benefits, um, for myself, I had to justify it. It's, it's an expensive um, thing to purchase in the first instance, and I had to make sure that, I, that, that I was, um, there was a benefit beyond the environmental benefit and, and working efficiency. Um, and I reckon, conservatively, we would be saving somewhere in the region of 5 to 7% on fuel use just through more efficient working in terms of uh, reducing overlaps um, with regards to cultivations and combining and then with regards to input application I would suggest that by um, variable rate application and through efficient um, turn off, uh, uh, turning on and off I reckon we could save 
conservatively two and a half percent of our of our inputs input costs. So, you know that that's. I would suggest for my business, we'll pay for the um, for the system within three years. So, as a farmer, uh, has it been worthwhile? And is it something I'd recommend to others? Well, we, uh, it's, I think it's certainly been worthwhile for our business. Um, I took the approach, rightly or wrongly, that we want we dipped our toe in with the, starting with the, the sprayer, and we've kind of built on that year on year. Um, I've that was what, what worked best for me and I see other people that actually don't want to commit to that so they've uh, started down the route of mapping their farms and having someone else come in and uh, do variable rate P&K for them just to see see what the cost savings are or perhaps how that optimises their analysis across the field and then if they think that's worthwhile then perhaps taking the next step but um, yeah I can only see it benefiting our business.